Hey everybody, Ranger Ronnie here today to talk about fossils. Fossils are evidence of ancient life, and paleontologists are the scientists that study that ancient life. To become a fossil, everything has to happen just right. The organism has to quickly get covered up by the sediment before it gets scavenged or carried away or decayed by the natural elements. It's not easy to become a fossil and it's even more difficult to be discovered millions of years later. So how do we find fossils? Today you're going to meet two of my colleagues here at Grand Canyon National Park who are paleontologists. They're going to let us follow along in the field and see how they discover fossils here at Grand Canyon National Park. Meet my fellow paleontologist Erica. And Anne. Let's follow them into the field. Hi, good morning. My name is Erica Olson. I use she, her, her pronouns. And I'm a paleontology assistant here at Grand Canyon. Um, I'm here working with geoscientists in the parks, conservation legacy, and the stewards in um, individual placement program. Uh, a little bit about me, I'm originally from Washington State, but I'm learning to love the desert, even though it's already really hot and it's only 9 a.m. Um, today we're doing some field work in the canyon, surveying for fossils in the Hermit Formation. And this is a formation from around 280 million years ago, and we're looking especially for fossil plants. So we'll see what we find later, and I'm excited to take you with us throughout our day. Hello, my name is Ann Miller and I am Erica's co-worker. Um, I actually was once a GIP as well and that's how I was able to get these amazing opportunities out here in Grand Canyon. Okay, so we're at the outcrop of Hermit Formation, and we just spent the last hour surveying it, meaning we, myself and my coworker Anne, he's filming this video, um, we basically looked through all of the slabs on the ground and looked at the outcrop itself, and we're looking for any um, plant or other fossil remains. And we actually found some really cool stuff today, which we got really excited about. Um, right here on this giant slab, um, we see, first of all, this really cool texture, and this is basically from like an algae mat growing in the sediment. So think of this as like sediment probably near a meandering stream, or within it even, and algae kind of growing on the surface. And then within the algae, we have these beautiful little conifer needles here. And what I think could be from the genus Walkia, although I can't say exactly in the field, so don't take my word for that. <laughs> but um, these little conifer branches are really well preserved, and they're the casts of the conifer, meaning when this little needle fell into the sediment, it created a mold, and later on sediment filled in that mold, leaving us with this beautiful print here. So this is a really cool slab that we found. We're not going to collect it because it looks pretty big. <laughs> but what we do when we find a cool fossil like this is we take a GPS um, point for the location in case we want to come back. And we take a lot of photos of it. And then we'll put all that data into our geodatabase where we keep all the information about fossils in the park. So this was a pretty good one. And then also my coworker Anne found this other really cool fossil uh, that kind of has this frond-like appearance. We're not quite sure what it could be. It could be another conifer branch. It could be a, potentially a seed fern, just looking at kind of this like radiating structure. Hard to say because it's not the most well-preserved, but it is another cool specimen we saw in the field today. So again, we took photos of it, took all the data, and we'll leave it out here with its fossil friends. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been a really productive day in the field so far. Found a lot of cool things, and we're able to survey a lot of ground looking for fossils in this area. So we're really excited, and 
I just love getting out in the fields and getting to see more of the Grand Canyon. That's really my passion about being out here is combining geology and my love for public lands and national parks. Hello everyone. We are here at a fossil locality where we've found some really interesting trackways made by potentially reptiles. And here we have Erica Olson and she is documenting this fossil site. Erica, what are those devices you're using? Hey, so in order to document all this information about the fossil site, we have a lot of cool equipment. So the first thing we do is we want to take a location point in case we want to come back to this site um, for future study. So right here I have this GNSS receiver, which is basically like a GPS, except it's more accurate because it uses more satellites. So it gives us a better um, description of this location. So I put this on here and it's telling me this is the location of our fossil slab that I'm looking at. And then that, this receiver communicates with my tablet here where I can put in all sorts of information that we collect about the site. So for example, I'm gonna collect a photo point where, I'm, where we're gonna take photos of this slab so we can look at later. And I'm gonna record all the information necessary. Great, and I'm gonna just look at this slab here. What do we got? So we have some trackways here just like all over this site. You can see many tracks through here. Wow, mm -hmm. that is really cool. And what a view we have back here. Mm -hmm. Good day in the office. So at another point in the track site, here's Ann Miller working on some other tracks. Ann, what are you, what are you doing there? Yeah, so I'm just brushing the dirt off of these tracks so that you can see uh, the preservation a little bit better. Um, this was pretty covered in dirt, and so we've we've sort of scraped it off, and now we see these beautiful tracks. And this trackway actually goes all the way up here. And then we also have even more trackways here. What? There's these here. Um, they're not quite as well preserved, but this is actually the mirror image of what these were. So this is the cast of the same tracks, and this is the mold. No way. <laughs> yeah. And then we have other tracks here. And you can see them in sequence, kind of going this way. So what kind of animal would have made these tracks, and how old are they? Well... These rocks are about 280 million years old, and this was a giant sand dune field. And what we think is that there, these were probably some type of reptile, um, pretty large, that was walking up and down this sand dune. So this sand dune was probably the exact same angle and preserved this way. Um, and we see both um, tracks going up the sand dune and going down. And we can tell based on where the claws are and the expulsion rim, which is basically the sediment that's left at the bottom of the track as it's going uphill or downhill. There, this is Ann Miller. And I've uh, come to a point on my trail to look for some exposures of the Bright Angel Shale. Um, to see if there's any fossils over here, but unfortunately there's not really any sort of exposures. So um, this is just part of the job where you get to a high point and you want to find something, but you don't. It is what it is, but the, the temperature is climbing, so I am going to head down to the creek.
Hello, <laughs> uh, my name is Ann Miller and I am the geologist slash paleontologist for Grand Canyon National Park. Um, right now we're standing on an outcrop at the Bright Angel Shale Formation and we're looking at um, a mixture of shales and sandstone. But what I want to show you is some really cool trace fossils. So if you look up at these beds, we're looking under an overhang and we can see all kinds of different worm burrows. Um, so these are just burrows that were likely made by a worm or some sort of vermiform creature. But then over here, you see this nice trace fossil called Cruziana. And this is made by a trilobite. Um, this trilobite was just furrowing uh, in the surface of the sediment and usually it was feeding or kind of just crawling across. And so you can see sort of the shape of what the trilobite was doing. And so if you come over here, I'll show you some more cool trace fossils. So what was the trilobite eating? So the trilobite could have been um, feeding on worms. As you can see, there's worm burrows that indicate that maybe the trilobite was feeding on these worms. You can see the burrows of the worms in the Cruziana as well. Um, some trilobites were also deposit feeders, so they might be feeding on micro-organic material inside the sediment. Um, so there's various things that they were feeding on. Now let's go look at another trace fossil. here is a trace fossil called Rhizophycus, and it's very similar to the Cruziana in that the trilobite was furrowing into the surface of the sediment, but in this case it just stayed there to rest. And so you can see these two lobes that sort of represent the lobes of the trilobite. And so in a way it's kind of an impression of the underside of a trilobite because we're looking at the bottom surface of a bed. And so that trilobite was likely resting there during a storm or hiding from a predator. Um, potentially, it was also feeding on something for a long period of time and then furrowed out of the surface, or sorry, out of the sediment and then walked on the surface. Um, and so this is called Rhizophycus. Nice. And how long ago did you say this was going on? So this was happening about 500 million years ago. This is the Cambrian period. And what's important about the Cambrian period is that it essentially represents all of the phyla of animals that we know of today. All of that phyla came from the Cambrian. And that's our bright angel shale. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Check our webpage for what fossil events may be happening where you live. Happy National Fossil Day!